Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and as I've been doing, I have been highlighting some of the players in the Ripple game from the past, present, um, and I can't do future, but anyway, I've, I've been highlighting um, some of the people from the their days at Ripple, and I wanted to do Greg Kidd today and show you a few videos from Greg Kidd. Before I get going, though, I wanted to show remind you he's a venture capitalist and he uh, he now runs Global ID. He was at Ripple from 2013 to 2015, but before that, he was from 2004 to 2013 at Promontory Financial Group. And Promontory Financial Group is known as a shadow regulator on in in um, DC. Now, this is a little article about it, and it shows some of the prominent people, the past affiliations. FDIC, this is with Promontory, FDIC, SEC, Fed, OCC, other and private sector. Basically, what's illustrated here to me is this, this is like, as I've described before, it's like a turnstile, Promontory between you know, the all of these government organizations and private industry and maybe startups too. So Greg Kidd, and as the story goes, as he tells it, he went from, he was at a card game and finds out about Ripple and he said it was like Moses coming down, okay? So I wanted to, I wanted to play just a, hand, a, a few clips from Greg Kidd. I'm going to play a long clip from this. Because it really lets you get a picture. What you're looking at, what, here's what you're looking at. This is, uh, he was the chief risk officer at Ripple Labs, Senate of Canada in 2015. Bank Trade and Commerce uh, Committee Senatorial, uh, I don't know all that, what all that says. But anyway, he's presenting, he's telling these guys about Ripple in 2015, okay? Thank you. Chairman. Gerstein, Deputy Chair and members of the committee, my name is Greg Kidd. I am the Chief Risk Officer of Ripple Labs, a technology company that builds payment tools for financial institutions. Previously, I worked on payment systems at the United States Federal Reserve and advised financial institutions on risk and governance. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to meet with you today. I commend your leadership in investigating virtual currencies and other emerging technologies. I'm pleased to offer an overview of Ripple and address any questions you may have. Ripple Labs is based in San Francisco and employs a team of 95 men and women with experience in government and regulation, finance and technology. Their previous experience includes Federal Reserve, US Securities and Exchange Commission, the NSA, Goldman Sachs, Deloitte, Apple and Google. Our goal is to create faster, safer, and more efficient payment systems domestically and across international borders. In my view, a large portion of today's inefficiencies in payments stem from antiquated infrastructure. In many countries, the technology underpinning payments was last updated in the 1970s and was not designed with interoperability in mind. Because systems are not compatible, banks have to rely on a patchwork of intermediaries to move funds, a process which introduces risk, delays, and costs. Ripple Labs aims to improve payments by offering modern, interoperable payment infrastructure for registered financial institutions, clearing houses, and central banks. As Ripple is payment technology for financial institutions, consumers may never know their transactions are being sent through Ripple, just as they have little to no knowledge of the ACH and wire rails that facilitate their payments today. Our technology is designed to minimize payment and counterparty risk, reduce costs, and enable connectivity between banks and payment networks. Before discussing the technology we use, I want to highlight that Ripple's technology 
fully complements existing regulations. When using Ripple, a financial institution's responsibility for OFAC reporting, anti-money laundering, compliance, know your customer requirements, and other regulatory reporting stays fully intact, just as with existing payment rails. This reflects Ripple Labs' view that ensuring robust security, consumer protections, and safety are crucial as we move toward improving payment systems. I would like to highlight two aspects of Ripple technology that are most relevant to the committee's work, a shared ledger and a virtual currency. At the core of a financial institution is its ledger, which is used to keep track of all the customer's balances. As each bank and payment system have their own ledger, they must rely on intermediaries or clearinghouses to make payments across different ledgers. This process adds delays, costs, and risks to payments. Ripple uses a shared ledger that enables transactions to be completed in real time, 24-7, 365 days a year, direct from the sending to the receiving bank. This eliminates intermediaries and minimizes risks and costs. While today's systems requires regulators to piece together several banks' ledgers to track funds, Ripple's shared ledger stores all payment records in one location, giving complete visibility into transactions and vastly improving traceability. Ripple's shared ledger enables greater transparency and more direct point-to-point -point payments, improving banks' compliance capabilities and supporting regulators in their anti-money laundering efforts. In addition to the ledger, Ripple utilizes a virtual currency referred to as XRP, but in a very different way than most virtual currencies are being used today. As your previous hearings have noted, a majority of virtual currencies are marketed to consumers to be used as means of exchange and a store of value. This poses serious liquidity, volatility, and security risks for consumers. Within Ripple, XRP is used very differently as a security mechanism and as an optional bridge between currencies. Each financial institution that uses Ripple is required to hold a small reserve of XRPs to be used as a postage stamp on transactions. With each transaction, a portion of XRP is destroyed typically equating to a tiny fraction of a cent. This imposes a small cost on transactions, yet makes it overwhelming, makes overwhelming the network with illicit traffic or a denial of service attack prohibitively expensive. In this way, XRP helps secure the network from attack and ensures its resiliency and reliability. The other use case for XRP is as an optional bridge between currencies. If a bank needs to make a payment for a customer to a recipient in another country, the bank may choose to use XRP as a low-cost, efficient bridge between the sending and receiving currencies. XRP lowers the reserve requirements for making cross-border payments. However, use of XRP as a bridge currency is entirely optional. A bank can freely choose to transact only in fiat currencies. In your investigations and ultimate regulations. Okay, that, that, that's a, I thought that was just a great clip. I mean, he lays out everything about Ripple and how, how it works. And, and this, remember, this was early days, 2015. You can imagine these, that was back when the banks were like, oh, he's talking about that digital currency stuff. But I mean, that's just fascinating. Now, here's Greg Kidd in 2018 laying out, talking about blockchains. The hype uh, that is happening to blockchain, is it a short term interest or it's a big, strong trend for the future? So I think blockchain, because it shows a way to have a trustless system where you don't have to rely on a central authority. I think the type of innovation that blockchain unleashes is as big as the internet. Now, having said that, there are a lot of challenges. It doesn't scale yet. It's not compliant. You need ways of linking one blockchain to another. 
But I think those are solvable issues, just like some of the early challenges for the internet were solvable. And so I think it is the first really genuine innovation in this space really in the last 10 years. So I'm very optimistic long term. I think there'll be a lot of challenges in the short term. Okay, and then there was this clip from uh, Stephen from the Bull Diep. Listen to this. Same things happened with cryptocurrency. There's some people that just want to ban it outright. Some people that think it's great. But there's enough people undecided that crypto made it out of the crib in the U.S. Not all crypto, but a company like Coinbase or Ripple, the first is which I invested, the second where I was the chief risk officer, show that they could be compliant enough to not get shut down right out of the box. And so it's finding that balance between being disruptive, but not too disruptive. Same things happened with crypto. All right, and then the final clip I wanted to show you is when I interviewed Greg Kidd, and here it is. Now, uh, did you, I'm assuming you know Miguel Vaez, who's the ex-head of XRP yeah. Markets. Um, he, my understanding is that he recently left Ripple. Yep. Um, now, the most interesting thing that ha that he has ever said, and I love I love the, some of the words that come out of the people at Ripple because that is what has kept me so fascinated by this company for so long. He said that Ripple had a simple goal of making XRP the world's reserve digital currency. So the question I have is, do you think that Ripple will achieve this goal? Well, I, see, my hopes are, are, are tied up with his, his vision, but, but that's why I joined Ripple. I mean, when I joined Ripple, it looked like Bitcoin with two extra columns, currency and who issued that currency. And so um, I want to live in the Star Trek world. And in the Star Trek world, it doesn't matter whether you're a Cleon, a Romulan Federation, they could all buy dilithium crystals. But you can't do that if your form of value is all in a silo. And so Ripple was the first that, that basically had a, like, if you will, an intergalactic currency, something that could go everywhere. The, the great thing, though, I mean, Bitcoin had that as well, but in Bitcoin, you could only have Bitcoin. On Ripple, you could have both the XRP, but you could also have a representation of all the other fiat currencies. So there was a way in and a way out. So Now, that's my favorite Greg Kidd line. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that Greg Kidd will be a, is a legend, and he's going to be an even bigger legend when this story is done being written. Thank you for listening.